uh, you're you're all so welcome, and uh, we just look forward to another great teaching. And this week's subject is the ultimate dimension: Christ in you, and how we're one with God, and the, the gifts that uh, are birthed in us. and And we look forward to learning more about that through John. And I'll go ahead and open in prayer. Father, we thank you. We we give you all the glory for this opportunity through this Zoom outreach and. And we just thank you. Thank you for uh, blessing us with John and the teaching and, and us growing in you and, and uh, being uh, strengthened in you and empowered by you to, to be uh, greater men and women uh, for God. And we thank you. We commit this time to you and pray your anointing on John as he shares and uh, that uh, you would just instill in us what you want to to be instilled in us. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome, John. Thank you, sir. I'd like to start off tonight by uh, asking for testimonies. Does anyone have a testimony of God using him during the past week? Just wave your hand to me. Okay, Michael. Share a testimony. You got three minutes. I'll take less than that. Most of you heard my testimony last night. Um, it was the fourth time I've shared my testimony since being part of uh, Full Gospel. And uh, the, the irony in the invitation from the Brea chapter was that, that it wasn't just uh, another opportunity to share an experience with others. I felt moved by the Holy Spirit to uh, share uh, viewpoints that I think that were were not mine, but, but God's in the respect of what's going on in the world, um, how we try to, uh, how I try to, I lived a life of being, thinking I was in control and, and, and more, more than, than that, that he was always in control. But, but the, the realization that, that I think was being conveyed that, that I just felt compelled to, to, to be spoken was that that everything that I've learned or read in the Bible or experienced in any testimony shared by any man or woman is that I keep coming back to this. In everything that I've learned, the invitation was always to all. It was never a segregated invitation. It was always about all. So whether it's borders, whether it's, 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 it's Haiti, you know, whether it's Africa, wherever it's at, the invite was for all to come to the table. And, um, you know, I've learned that. And in my, in not only in what I've learned from the time that, that, uh, that I, I made my testimony and knew that God was actively working in my life, even though that it took all these years to learn that, that uh, I, I felt compelled and, and was driven by the Holy Spirit to share that, to, rem, to remind me and all of us that it is all, all of us. And, uh, and, I, and that's how I, I, I hope that I, I spoke on uh, for his glory last night when I gave my testimony. It's our, our world around us is for all. It's not about one or the other. It's all of us. And uh, I don't think that we can lose sight of that. I think that's what the Holy Spirit was trying to get me to convey was that, that Jesus never stopped wanting to build the community. And it was never about Gentiles, Samaritans, this or that. It was about every one, all of us. Wow. Good. Thank you, Michael. Well, I think I think I just got replaced. <laughs> Michael can take over to the school from here on out. <laughs> and, and that's a beautiful thing about all of the books of Demis Shikarian. Uh, they're written to the body of Christ. They're not just for the fellowship. And uh, even the happiest people on earth, far more people uh, have bought the book outside of the fellowship than inside the fellowship. Hmm. And uh, it has blessed many people to become pastors and priests because they read that book. And uh, uh, so, uh, I confirm what you're saying, and 
I thank you for it. Who else has a has a miracle from God this week? Go ahead, Roger. So um, you had suggested that we um, one of our assignments was to pray in tongues in the morning before we got out of bed, and um, the Lord put somebody on our heart. And um, I uh, retired almost two years ago, and um, I was asked to, um, uh, about three weeks ago, to uh, come back to um, join a going away luncheon for somebody who worked for me. And um, I met the, I, somebody I worked with, um, I was talking to that was also at the luncheon, and just were, you know, doing a little catch up and everything. Um, and um, anyways... So um, I hadn't seen her for, you know, for quite a while, so in a, almost two years. So anyways, to make a long story short, we, um, so I'm praying in tongues, I get done praying in tongues, and the Lord gives me interpretation, puts this woman's name on my heart, and so I'm like, okay, so, but, you know, as we talked about, so what do we, what do I do with that? And so the Lord said, um, I want you to add her to your uh, Sunday uh, morning, I uh, since when COVID started and people were, uh, you know, isolated, I was sending out to family members and some friends a scripture and a, a, a song in, in the morning. And I've been doing that now for like 70 something weeks because it's been going on. And then I just, everybody likes it. So anyways, the Lord said, add her on. Um, but I want you to ask her permission first. So I sent her right. I, I'm still in bed. I didn't even get out of bed. Um, I wrote her a text and um, said, I hope I'm not waking somebody up. But anyways, um, I got a response right away saying that would be awesome and lovely, et cetera, et cetera. Please do. And so wonderful. And, you know, all, and, you know, uh, this, a lot of superlatives. And um, so, um, so I sent her the first one this, uh, this past Sunday morning and um, got a great response back and everything else. But um, you know, that's, that's the Lord, because uh, number one, I wasn't thinking about it. Secondly, um, I wasn't thinking about adding that. This is, none of these were my thoughts. Tells us to do um, that, that releases power. So who knows? what's going to happen with it, but God bless. I now have a connection with this woman that, um, you know, the Lord can use through the spirit. Uh, let me comment on that. <clears throat> uh, when I was in the army, I was, uh, I was a platoon leader in Vietnam and <clears throat> I had about 15, 20 guys with me. And uh, my company commander always insisted that our radios work. And he said, as long as your radios work, I can support you. I can call in artillery. I can call in uh, air power. I can call in B-52s to help you. <laughs> but if you are not in communication with me, you're the, the most power you have is in your hands with that pop, pop gun that you have. And so uh, he really impressed me to uh, make sure that I had extra batteries <laughs> for my uh, radios and uh, that uh, they were always working. Now the same thing works for our relationship with Jesus. When we have reached the point like yourself, you pray in tongues, God adds his will to what you're saying, and then he interprets his will to you. Uh, and then uh, when you take the first step to do his will, that releases Jesus to bring the B-52s in. And I tell you, it's such an exciting thing. Uh, Jesus said in, in one scripture, I have no idea where it is. He says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do what I say? And you call him Lord, and you complied with what his will was to call that lady. Or a texture, or whatever. And then, and then she was so totally blessed. 
Now, I'll guarantee that uh, when she is, her miracle comes to her because Jesus put that on your heart and you complied. She's going to get a miracle. I Money back it. guarantee. Yeah, I believe it. <laughs> and, and when she gets a miracle, that person is, is a great candidate to do the same thing with the next person. So if you'll keep in touch with her, you have a disciple there, not of you, not of Roger, <laughs> but of the guy that did the miracle. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? And yeah. that's the biggest joy we have is to turn was, people on to Jesus. I was thrilled. I was so, so blessed by that. I really was. Does anybody else have a complaint or a testimony or anything? Yes, sir. Richard, where are you from, Richard? I'm from Nigeria. I'm in China. Good evening, sir. Oh, Richard, I've written, I've written, I've had correspondence with you in the past. I think I've, so. Yeah, yeah. That's welcome tonight. What's your testimony? Three minutes. Okay. It's so far away here on the other side of the world, and you only get three. We'll give you an extra time. Four weeks, four minutes. <laughs> Actually, two minutes. Okay. So um, <laughs> we 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 have a house fellowship that we've been attending, and there are two uh, Iranian uh, gentlemen that are, that we have been following up for some months now, or almost a year. So last Sunday, I was privileged when they said they are ready to accept Jesus now. Yeah. So we we pray and let them. I, I prayed, and as the only pastor there, I prayed and anointed them, and it was really a, a privilege for me. So I, I, I want to share this to the glory of God, that God will take them from there and, and begin to teach them uh, what he has called them for. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Richard. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. One last person. Anybody? Yes, Howard. Thank you so much. It's so good to be here with you all tonight. Sorry I missed last week. Uh, I had some things going on, but thank you for allowing me to participate uh, with you. I, I'm just excited about what God is doing. And uh, I was reading Dr. Mrs. Sherry's book about uh, uh, the vision intensified and i really believe that that's going to happen and i just i just finished with a men's group about 40 people we're working at trying to look at something bring here to tampa but we we were there talking and something that he hit me with was this the gentleman earlier talked about uh we're all one and that's what jesus is trying to do i looked at i was looking at just one thing i was looking at the book the genesis the first chapter when he created us in his image his likeness, not in his, not his physical image, but the spiritual moral image of God himself. So that's us. We lost that when Adam and Eve sinned. Jesus comes back and gives us that opportunity again to do that. We have to now take advantage of that so that the spirit in us that's connected with God himself is going to allow things to happen the way that Jesus allowed to happen. And I just was so excited. I was with a bunch of men tonight. And the gentleman who spoke was a guy by the name of uh, Ed Coble, who is the president of the, uh, uh, the Bartolo Corporation. And he took us back to John 15, where Jesus told us to abide in him. And that same thing that Demas was, I think, trying to tell us, <laughs> just abide in him and abide in his love. His love is agape. And he'll do whatever he asked him to. And that's where I look at when I started the full gospel, his banner of us is love is so powerful that Mr. Sakarian understood that. He understood that powerful word coming from God himself. And I believe personally, he spread the gospel all over the world. And I just want to say I was so excited tonight to hear that. And I thought about him as I was hearing the gentleman talk about John 15. Uh, 
Isn't God good, everybody? He's really good. I'm going to ask that everybody take pen and paper in hand, just like I got a piece of paper and pen in hand. And uh, <clears throat> write down the name of someone that needs a miracle. We're going to pray for him here in two minutes. Wherever it is and whatever miracle it is, whether it's healing or deliverance or finances or family, whatever it is, just write the name down. God's going to do the miracle. Hey, Brother John, just one. <laughs> well, you'll have to pay you'll have to pay extra for more than one but go ahead put down the whole list that you want but we're we're you're going to pray for them but we're going to agree with each one of you it's going to be a group prayer you're going to i'll explain write down the names that you want One minute. There are 36 people uh, in this class tonight. And if you've just written one name, that would say that there's at least 36 people that are gonna receive miracles tonight. You're gonna pray for them. And you're gonna speak the miracle that they need over them tonight. <clears throat> now I wanna, share with you that in john 14 jesus said whatever you ask the father for in my name he will give it to you blank check do you believe that blank check yeah. <laughs> and why is that because jesus was the one that put that person's name in your spirit he, Jesus wants to do the miracle for that person. You're just the instrument that God used to get that miracle to the person. What a privilege to be used by the Lord. Now, just put your hand on that person's name there and uh, begin to cry out to the Lord. Jesus, no, wait, wait. Don't ask the Lord for the miracle. He's going to put it in you prophetically and you speak it into that over that person's life. It, I'll show you how. In Jesus' name, I command the uh, Neil's wife, Kathy, be healed of her bone problem. In Jesus' name, I command those bones to come together and the and the restoration of her bone structure be done even now as we agree in prayer in Jesus name for the glory of God now when you when you pray in the name of Jesus it glorifies the father because the father was the one that sent Jesus to the earth and when you pray in Jesus name then 
That's like saying, Father, you were right to do that. I agree. You did it right. And Jesus is the one that does it. And so when you agree with, with Jesus' name, and when you pray in his name, the Father releases what you are. So get ready to do it over right now. You have one minute. Minister the miracle to the person that you wrote down. Now. Father God, to rebuke that spirit of sickness, lung problem, asthma, COVID, whatever it is, in the name of Jesus, Father God, remind me that he's my father. Father, I wrap up the COVID, go into your house, and harm the Father God. Make it be honor. Harm us, empower us, wrap it with the COVID. It into the dark place and came from cover with your Holy Spirit, loose your Holy Spirit in his heart, mind, body, soul, and spirit with special tendons on his heart and breathing his smell of respiratory and recovery. In Jesus' name, now, new heart, new valves. Now there's a, uh, a a special thing about this. When you become an instrument in God's hands, that's Catherine Coleman. That's Benny Hinn. That's Dima Shakarian. You you become an expression of. God wanting to do something in the earth. I made up a little ditty about that that says you're the fourth man on the team. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and you. For them to be, be able to do anything in the earth, they have to do it through you. They're in the spirit realm. But they need someone in the material realm to birth their will into the earth. And so when you wrote down these people's name, it was, by, it was a prophetic act done by the Holy Spirit in you. And when you spoke their healing into the earth over their name, that was Jesus doing it through you. I want you to start understanding that this, this school is here to birth in you the ultimate dimension and it's not just church religion it's something that very few churches have taught i've never heard this teaching in any of the churches that i've been in and that's been i've had wonderful pastors to speak uh to have more faith uh and to walk more holy and all these things are good but no one ever told me that uh, Jesus is in me. No one ever did. Maybe I went to the wrong church, but uh, I've been in church for 51 years. And uh, the, uh, uh, I, not until I read it in Demas Shakarian's book that uh, it, it was actually brought out. The, the only time that I, the earlier time that I had this was uh, my pastor asked me to pray for revival in the church. And so we were praying for revival and the Lord said, no. And I was stunned. I couldn't believe it. So I started complaining to the Lord. I said, Lord, we're praying in your name. And he said, no. And I said, Lord, I don't understand. Explain to me. He says, I don't want revival. I want habitation. I don't want revival. I want habitation. And I had no idea what he's talking about. And so when I started researching revivals, 
most of them only lasted one or two years. The Zilsa Street lasted maybe five years. And what happened after that? All those bars that were closed down in Wales because of the revival there that only lasted a year or two. And those bars that turned into churches. Well, today, churches are going broke in revival and they're being replaced with bars. In other words, uh, the, the transformation that God is looking for is Christ in you. That's long-term. Long-term is from the moment you're born again until you go to heaven, Jesus habitates within you. The Holy Spirit habitates within you. And I have the crazy theology, personal theology, that where the Holy Spirit and Jesus are, uh, I would imagine the Father hangs out with him. <laughs> so you got the Godhead in you. I mean, I don't know. I hope lightning doesn't come in right now. <laughs> but that's that's what I believe. It's the B-52. And, and as long as you're connected, your combo is open with Jesus, you know, through the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues and waiting for the interpretation and then speaking it into the earth, taking the first step to fulfill that, then you become the instrument for the will of God to be done in the earth. And so rejoice, my brothers and sisters. How many people in the world do you know of that are in sync with the Holy Spirit like that? This is precious for God. He is so thankful that you are willing to hear from him and to speak his will into the earth. Now, what's important about that is that what Demas put in the introduction of this of this book that we're studying tonight. He says in the introduction, I'm just going to read one line. When just one person reaches God's ultimate dimension, he or she will be able to do more than an entire army of ordinary Christian soldiers. Why is that? Well, you know, the 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 body of Christ, the church, they people that have researched have said that our divorce rate is the same as the world. Someone's keeping numbers. In the church, does that mean that the world is in the church? Or that the church has become worldly? I don't know. But I do know this is Jesus is so excited when he can find a man or a woman that will do his will and not their own. And that's the whole purpose of Christ being in us. We have is when and, and so how do we release the Christ in us to do his own will through us? We have to decrease and he has to increase. That's John 3 30. Please write that down. John chapter 3, verse 30. That was John the Baptist saying, I, Jesus must increase and I must decrease. That, that's probably why he was the greatest prophet that ever lived. <laughs> Jesus said that because he had that understanding of getting out of the way and letting Jesus express himself. Wow. Now, I've had that experience of Jesus expressing himself in love through me while I'm sitting there hating my enemy. I can feel his love pour through me for my enemy. And I got so mad at Jesus once. I said, Lord, you're taking his side. 
but I had no control over him. He just loved right on through me. And you know what? That guy um, had a great miracle in his life. And, uh, uh, and a whole nation was restored because that man was, was uh, restored back into fellowship because that one man had, had isolated his nation from the love of God because he had caused a blockage there. And so we're in a privileged position but it won't work without, without, I say it this way, Jesus had to be crucified to become our savior. Now remember that, well, maybe you wanna write that down. <laughs> it's the heart, heart of the gospel. Jesus had to be crucified to become our savior. But we have to be, have to crucify the old man for him to become our Lord. Did I just confuse you? <laughs> because my old man always wants to rule over everybody, including God. It's just part of the human nature. And the human nature always has to be beat down so that the divine nature, like it says in the, the uh, the scriptures in Peter, the divine nature can come through. And the only way they can come through is for me to crucify the old man. And you know, that's, I have to do that. There's certain things that I have to do. I have to agree with God's will. I have to agree to allow his will and not my will. And these are things that come because I've submitted myself willingly to his lordship. Now, I wanted to just leave it there because I'm not going to tell you how many, how many times I, I trip, up, trip up on that. My wife will tell you how many times I trip up on that per day. But thankfully, he is, he is his grace, his grace. I don't even know, understand his grace, but his grace it, uh, makes us his instrument. And he can do mighty things. And, and the example that the heavenly father gave Demas Shikarian was Moses' rod. Whenever, whenever God wanted to do something, through Moses in the earth. He did it through the rod. He put the rod in the river and it turned to blood. He, he put the rod over the Red Sea and it parted. And, and so you and me are the rod that God uses. We just have to be willing to be his instrument. And so tonight, when you spoke that person's name, you can expect the, the, the father is going to give that person the miracle that you prayed for, because you spoke it into this dimension, into the material realm. And that's how God gets his will into the earth, through you. Okay, I wanna share a couple other things about this book. Uh, if you don't have the, the Ultimate Dimension book, please let us know in, uh, in the chat, I guess, and we'll get it to you. We may have to carry it to your front door, but we'll get it to you. It's so important. And, but this is what's important about the gift of tongues. You know, uh, I married a Pentecostal. And she prays more in tongues than anyone anywhere. <laughs> and uh, uh, for years and years and years, I didn't understand why she was always praying in tongues. You know, I could pray in tongues, but 
I didn't know why she was living in, in the speaking of tongues. But so much power would flow out of her. And I realized that it was, it was joined, joined with the next gift, which is interpretation of tongues. And the interpretation of tongues tells us, reveals to us what God was saying when we were speaking in tongues and didn't understand it. And speaking in tongues is the easiest thing that we can do. I mean, all you have to do is, is, is start talking in, in a language that you don't understand. And if you just keep doing it, God will sharpen it up. I don't know what I'm saying. But all the time I'm speaking in tongues, God is putting his will, his, under, his revelation on my words. Now, I'll tell you how powerful it is. How did God create this world, the universe, the sun? the moon, he spoke it into existence. He separated the land from the water. He created the fish and the birds. And so he all, he's always spoke it into existence. Light be, light was. <laughs> and that's what he does when he uses you. You speak in tongues, you get the revelation, you speak it into the earth in English or Spanish or whatever your, your language is. You take the first step to, to put in his will into motion and that releases him to, to, to complete his will through you. Because you've made your communication sure. Man, I, I can't tell you how naked I felt when 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 I would I would say to my radio guy, just are are they hearing you when we ask for a helicopter to come and bring us some more food and ammunition? <laughs> no, the battery's dead. Great, who's got an extra battery? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> you feel really bad. But you never have to look for batteries when you speak in tongues. Because it's the Holy Spirit that speaks through you and he's in you. He provokes it. He provokes it. Whether you believe it or not, just begin to speak in tongues. And the Holy Spirit will begin to make it abundant in you. And Jesus will put his meaning on those tongues. And you'll be speaking to him and he'll tell you what you just told him <laughs> it works oh i gotta tell you the president of this fellowship in zambia africa southern africa sent me a text last night he said john it works <laughs> asking for the interpretation works and then he he was given he he hadn't even gotten out of bed yet there's another guy Hadn't gotten out of bed yet. He was speaking in tongues. The Lord gave him a revelation who to call. And he called that person. And that person was so thankful that God was interested in him and had someone praying for him. That uh, uh, So the president of, of Zambia now, he's a died in the world believer. And uh, he, he is... governable by the Holy Spirit, by Jesus, governable by the Lord Jesus. Now, in Isaiah, I think it's chapter 9, verse 6, I think, and 7, it says, unto us a child is born, and the government shall be on his shoulders. So 
Jesus the Lord wants to govern us. How does Jesus the Lord govern you and me? By the Holy Spirit. And, and where is the Holy Spirit? It's in us. And so the Holy Spirit begins to express the will of God through us. Now, I want to, a guy the other day asked me, how do I know that the Holy Spirit is within me? Or that Jesus is specifically said, how do I know that Jesus is, is in me? And I said, well, have you been born again? And he said, yes, I have been born again. It wasn't just a, a, it wasn't just a religious baptism in water. It was, I really came before my Savior, and I, I asked him uh, to be born again. And I could feel that the very first thing I felt was peace. He said, well, that's great. But as we go along, we sometimes, you know, the, the human nature, the old man begins to take precedence if we don't keep him under our crucified. And so the, the old man, it's like the story I'm sure you've all heard in church. Guy was walking through the cemetery and he saw a hand reaching out of one of the, uh, of the, of the tombs. And the hand starts saying, help me, help me. I haven't been, they buried me wrong. They buried me. I'm still alive. And he went over and looked at it and stroked his beard for a second. And then he jumped on the hand. <laughs> no, you were very wrong. <laughs> you are dead. And, and so you get back in there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we have to say that to our, our old man sometimes because this man had a good question. How do I know Jesus is really in me? Galatians chapter five. You can jot this down. I'll read it to you. Verse 22, 23, 24. 25, he starts off by saying, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, that's patience, gentleness, goodness, faith. Don't let anybody tell you, you need more faith, brother. You can't generate faith. You can generate belief, but not faith. Faith comes by the spirit. Meekness. And I like the, the next one in, in my King James, it says temperance. But I like what it says in the TPT. What is that? Um, it says, probably the Passion Translation, TPT. Thank you, sir. You, you, teach, you teach next after Michael. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And that guy was a Wycliffe translator that wrote that, that did the translation there. He, uh, he said, um, strength of spirit. I love that interpretation of temperance because uh, uh, other 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 uh, translations would say self-control and I never liked that because it would start off saying the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace that's the fruit of the spirit and then it gets down to self-control suddenly it's not the fruit of the spirit it's me controlling it and so when I discovered strength of spirit the spirit the holy spirit then 
the rest of the verses made sense too. They that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit, it says in verse uh, 25. And uh, if you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So the our main enemy, our, our most our most powerful enemy is not Satan. Satan was defeated on the cross. And my communication with the Lord Jesus on my walkie-talkie releases all the power in the world to do Satan in. But it's my human nature that I have to make sure that I crucify the old man. And when when that man's trying to struggle out of the tomb <laughs> and say, I'm really alive, my wife will tell me, John, get it back in the tomb. <laughs> so, and take the garbage out while you're at it. <laughs> so this is, this, is, this is what Demas is trying to tell us. The Holy Spirit does dwell inside you but, but you, the, the Holy Spirit is the one that joins us to Jesus Christ. See, this is my interpretation. If I'm wrong, forgive me. This is what I, this is how I see how the Holy Spirit works when you're born again. When I'm born again, the Holy Spirit comes from Jesus to me. He, and where does he land? He comes and lands at my human spirit right there they join together that's the work of the holy spirit and at that moment i'm born again now if i'm wrong write me a note and we'll both know the truth but that's what i've known in my life for years is that gives me the divine nature is when the holy spirit comes into me and i'm not killed physically but i'm and, and I think I will be welcomed at the whole, at the pearly gates is that Jesus transforms me into a child of God. And that's when I can call the heavenly father, my father. That's when I can say of Jesus, he said to Mary, he says, go tell my brethren that I'll meet them in Galilee. Can you imagine that? That's, wow, that's grace. That's beautiful. And the Holy Spirit is in this to make all that possible, to make it active, to make it work. I never have to buy batteries. <laughs> that's so cool. Now, so when, how do I know if Jesus is in me? When you feel his love come forth. When I start to love my, no, 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 I take it back. When, when I feel Jesus love my enemies through me and I don't, I know that Jesus is in me. When he has patience and I don't, when he expresses his patience, his goodness, his meekness, his faith, when I can feel all these things flowing through me, I know that he lives within me. He dwells within me. And how can I enjoy it? I have to decrease and he increases. I have to give more room to the work of the Holy Spirit in me. If I walk in the spirit, in other words, decreasing so that Jesus can increase, then these things become real every day for me. And I can actually be used as an instrument in Jesus' hands to do his will. Not my will, but thine be done. So that's why when you pray for these people on your list today, you can expect them to receive the miracle they need. Now, here's another thing. 
the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, prophecy, all these things that you have are in you because Christ is in you. The Holy Spirit is within you. And Jesus works these things through you by the Holy Spirit. Prophecy, for instance, is something that flows like a river. When you decrease, the Holy Spirit is free to express the presence of Jesus in you. And every time you speak a prophetic word, you're like being used to create the earth again. You're being used to Call forth the fish and the birds, the animals. Can you imagine? Who was it? Was it uh, was it uh, Adam? It was called to name all the animals. Well, well, my goodness, who brought the animals to Adam to name? <laughs> and if that isn't uh, cool, who brought the uh, female and male to? Uh, Noah to give a ride in his boat it had to be God and who kept them quiet without eating each other <laughs> so that we could have giraffes afterwards and buffaloes and who knows what else <clears throat> God was ruling in the ark God was ruling over Adam at that time God still rules over the Adam and me and you, and he's working with us every day to release the Christ in us, to be free, to be the Lord and Savior. Now, I have a confession to make. God told me five years ago that in this season, everybody please, please say these words, in this season, Got it. He is going to reveal, reveal his son as Savior, Lord, and King of the kingdom of God. Now, most of us have a pretty good idea of how about Jesus the Savior. I mean, we wouldn't be sitting here if he hadn't, hadn't saved us. We would have gotten bored and left a long time ago. But I think most of you are here because he has placed the Holy Spirit in you to see him, to reveal to you Jesus the Lord. And Jesus is going to use you as an instrument in the earth to bring his will to pass as he gives you the prophetic words to speak into the earth you don't have to you don't have to be a politician you can be a politician you don't have to be a military man you can be a military man but you know the 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 greatest power on earth is the god spoken word jesus was referred to in John chapter one, verse one, I think, as the word. And when the word comes out of your mouth, it has the power to cause life to flow. That's why when we pray every week for uh, our leaders in the name of Jesus, we're releasing the power of God over those men and women. You are controlling the nation. You are controlling your nation. Will, you're, you're controlling Barbados when you pray for the nation in Jesus' name and you prophesy over it and you speak in tongues over it. Then, then the the will of the Lord is going to be released in that nation.
I have seen this with my eyes. I have physically lived that in the country of Guatemala. Cuba and Nicaragua were trying to take it over with guerrilla warfare. And some intercessors began to, to pray. And we saw God cause that guerrilla war to disappear. And, an, and, a, and a Christian president uh, came to power, a general that had received Jesus Christ as Lord. And on his inauguration night, he said, I promise this nation will be governed by the Holy Spirit. Whoa. <laughs> and it was for three and a half years. It was powerful. The economy came back to that country. Peace came back to that country. Uh, uh, honest government came back to that country. And today that country has recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, following the example of the USA. Now, I, I'm going to ask you all to remember next week, please, before this meeting starts, call the people you prayed for tonight and get the testimonies of what God did in their life. So there should be like 35 people sharing miracle testimonies next week. The next thing that uh, we're gonna do is, we're gonna study this, this here, uh, a new wave of revival in your finances. Demas wrote this book. And the reason he wrote this book is because most people that have a calling in their life join it join are, are, are financed by a church or a denomination or a ministry but what if you have a calling and and no one is is financing you that's what this book is about if in number one is how to discover your calling this week, you can uh, pray in tongues. Lord, reveal to me what my calling is. And there's something else that comes along with your calling. Your assignment. I'll use myself as an example. When I first became a, a Christian, uh, the desire in me was to serve the Lord in some way other than just sitting on the bench in, in my church. And so as I, as I looked around, the offers that came to me was, one was to work in a, in a, uh, a ministry to drug addicts and prostitutes. And I was there for about uh, a year but you know, that, that was really hard on me. And so I didn't really put out my, my best effort there. And right about the time I was, I, oh yeah. And then they, they asked me to be the youth pastor of my church. I was fired from that because two young ladies received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues. And that was the end of that assignment. <laughs> And then, and then the third offer that came along was someone showed up in town and wanted to start a chapter of Full Gospel Business. This was 1978. And uh, they, these men came from uh, Seattle in Oregon and uh, they bought the di dinners in the fanciest hotel in town for 500 people. And they brought in the, uh, uh, the head of the, um, of the uh, leader of, uh, of the uh, public relations office of the Vatican to share with us how uh, the, uh, the charismatic renewal began in the Catholic Church. And he told us the story 
of how seven students of Notre Dame went to a full gospel businessman chapter and went home that night to the dormitory speaking in tongues. And it started there in 1967. And today there's 200 million Catholics, Pentecostal Catholics that pray for the sick, cast out devils, open the eyes of the blind, heal the sick. It's, it's growing around the world, growing around the world. Full Gospel USA, you can expect to grow because the Holy Spirit's in this thing. You're, you're not, you're not, you're not swimming against the tide. You're being carried by a river of the Holy Spirit. And that's going to cause this whole nation of the USA and the nations that are joining us tonight, you all will be transformed because the Holy Spirit is being poured out on all flesh. And your sons and daughters will prophesy. You old men, not me, you old men who <laughs> will dream dreams. <laughs> and the young men like, uh, like Bill Wilson yes, will, be, will be, uh, will see visions. And uh, well, hi, John. That's, um, that's my mother-in-law calling. I'll call you back, Grandma. Her timing is perfect. Look at that. I should have ended two minutes ago. <laughs> okay, so remember your homework. You're going to call the people back that you prayed for tonight. And uh, we're going to read a new wave of revival in your finances. Okay, I have time for one question. Who has a question, a comment, a complaint? All of the above. You have to turn your mic on. Yeah. Um, John, you said something here which um, kind of will go against my understanding. You said that faith comes by the Spirit, right? Yeah. And, and, that, and that we cannot grow our faith, right? But there is also... But there is also a scripture that says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And God has given us a measure of faith. So by that, I get to understand that that measure of faith that is given us can be increased as we study the word and hear more of the word. Where did the measure come from? From the Holy Spirit. There you go. You just answered it. But can that be increased? Oh, I don't know. I know this, I know this. I'm not a rabbi, I'm not a expert on the Bible, but I know this, that as we decrease and he increases, all the gifts increase with us. Uh, the, because Christ is released and he's the one that works the gifts through us. He's the one, the miracles. I don't know a single person that I'm looking at right now that ever healed the sick. Jesus in him or in her healed the sick when he prayed in the name of Jesus. So we learn to release the Christ that's in us. I don't know if that's the right term or not, but at least get out of the way so he can do what he wants to do. His will and not mine. Okay. Anybody else? One more question because that was easy. <laughs> we'll answer it. <laughs> okay. We're going to close off here and Bill's going to pray us out. Okay. I feel led to have all of us pray in the Holy Spirit for like one minute as we close. Uh, and Praise if we can all un unmute and uh, just, just lead out in the Holy Spirit for a minute or so. I, I just feel like God wants to use this to do that. 
Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Continue to remind us to pray in the Spirit in all occasions. All the praise. Thank you for John. Thank you for this word in our hearts. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Can I say something? Yes, John. It, it, I just felt impressed to, to remind us that uh, <clears throat> when when Jesus said, "Go to the go th to Peter, go throw your your hook in and pull out a fish." And take the first coin, the, take the coin there. He said, if I'm not mistaken, I don't remember, but I think I'm going to say it right. He said, pay your taxes in mine. Now, if I'm, if that's how he said it, the question is, who is being financed when God releases provision to us? Is it our ministry or is it Christ's ministry through us? If it's Christ's ministry through us, it is without limits. What could you do or what could he do without financial limits? This is not for you to go out and buy a car. Everything continues to be led by the Spirit. What do you want me to do with your money? Whenever anyone gives me an offering for some reason or another, I say, Lord, what is this for? And, and sometimes it's for the next guy. And sometimes it's, it's yours. And when it's mine, I eat steak. <laughs> but when it's the next guy, I'm doubly blessed because I was an instrument of in God's hands. Isn't that beautiful? So you're you guys are so privileged to be a, a, a rod in God's hands. Okay, guys, I'm gonna call my mother-in-law. So God okay. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Thank you, John. Thank you. Bye-bye.
Bye-bye. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. God, God bless, bless you all. You. Good night. Thanks. Good night. Oh. Hey, thank you, Lorenzo. Great meeting tonight, guys. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Thank Pat. you. Bless thank you, John. You. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, Richard. Bye. Bye. Hi, Leo. Hi, Richard. Hi, God bless you. Hi to China. I have to talk Two to you. Two nights in a row. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Jesus. Bye. Bye. Thank, you. Bye. thank you, Ron. Bye. <laughs> Welcome, Bill. Thanks, Ron. Bye, everyone. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye-bye.